Madam Chief Justice, Madam Deputy Chief Justice, Honorable Members of the Court, may it please you, I am called upon to look at issues number eight and nine on the materiality question and on reliefs. My Lord, in, in view of the sorry, time, sorry, I will not go sorry, into- Sorry, counsel, uh, for our recording system, if you can just introduce yourself. We know you, but for our- I, I apologize, I apologize, my Lord. My name is Abdi Kadir H. Muhammad. I appear with my learned colleagues for the IBC and the chair. Uh, my Lords, my ladies, in view of the timing, I will not go into a lot of the law as far as the standard of proof is concerned. This matter is tried as far as the law is concerned. The standard is higher than four civil cases, normal civil cases, but does not go as far as required for criminal cases. In other words, it does not go as far as beyond reasonable doubt, but it is higher than a balance of probabilities, except where criminal conduct is alleged or there is an election offense alleged, in which case then you go to the higher proof beyond reasonable doubt. The submissions of the first and second respondent in the, in, in the lead, uh, uh, the, the submission of the respondents in the lead uh, petition at paragraph eight, page four, deal with the law, the cases, Raila Odinga 2013, para 203, number one, uh, pre uh, uh, presidential election number one, of 2017, para 151 to 152, and the courts clearly state uh, that the, the allegations should not be general, they should not be bare allegations, and the standards must be met. In John Harun Mwau, at page 349 to 350, 2017, that was the holding of the, of the, of the courts. So the law is very clear on this matter, my lords and my ladies. I'll then go on itemizing some of the allegations or some of the, the issues uh, raised in terms of illegalities and irregularities and, and specifically state whether those standards have been met and in broad case, they haven't. So there have been allegations of a dysfunctional commission. This, my lords, is not a court dealing with a corporate governance case. It is an election petition court dealing with the presidential elections in 2022. My lord, my lords and my ladies, the case of Maina Kiai dealt with the issues of the commission and the chair and their place in the process that we are talking about, in the verification process. And it's very important to understand that the petitioners want to turn that case on its head. Because if you recall, what the petitioners in the Maina Kiai case were fighting against it was the interference by the commission or the chairman in the results when they come to the National Tiling Center. This is exactly what the petitioners are asking to do. They are asking the commission to interfere with the results at that point. That is not the law. Number two, there was the allegation that the commission is equal to the commissioners that was dealt with by my learned colleague, senior counsel, uh, Kamau Karori. But let me just add that it will be absurd to say that the only elections, the only verification that is acceptable under the law is by verification by the commissioners. What then would we make of the elections at the counties and the, uh, the, the tallying and verification of the counties and the tallying and verification of the constituencies where no commissioner is present. What would we make of section 391C, which says the commission will transmit, which commissioner transmitted when? It is the commission officers, the commission employees, and the commission is certainly more than the commissioners. My lords, that allegation, therefore, that there was a dysfunctional commission, and this led to the results not being verified, is not born. The standards have not met, and it is not the law. The commission practically will need to rely on its officers across the country in the 46,000 plus polling stations for the work of the commission, including 
presiding officers verify and transmitting. The next allegation broadly was the issue of the rogue chairman. Here we have a bogeyman where all the issues can be affixed to this good gentleman. At the end of the day, after you clear through the fog, what were the issues that the chairman was being accused of? They do not meet the standards, I pray, that would be required for us to overturn the presidential elections in the general election of 2022 and send 14 million plus Kenyan voters back to the vote and spend immeasurable amounts in treasure. The chairman is accused of single-handedly conducting the elections of gazetting himself, and it's alleged that the, 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 the office of returning officer for the, national, for the presidential election does not exist. I adopt the, the presentation from my learned colleague, Mr. Kamau Karori. But suffice it to say that we all accept that 138.10 gives a role to the, to, the, to the chairman to declare, that regulation 87.3 gives legal roles to the chairman, and case law has given legal roles to the chairman. Those roles, when you put them together, essentially spell out the role of a returning officer. And in the old uh, company law, the definition of a director used to go that a director is a director by whatever name called. And the returning officer is the returning officer by whatever name called, because he is undertaking the functions of the returning officer. Let me now turn to, to the allegations from the other commissioners and the averments in the, in the affidavits. If you look at the totality, what you get is that these good ladies and gentlemen were either negligent or unaware of their functions, or in fact were not stating the truth as such, because the law requires for the commission to hold a minimum of one meeting per month. More were held during the elections. They attended all those meetings under the affidavits. The vice chair and Mr. Wanderi attended the trip you are told about in Greece, where they, they went to uh, check on the presidential ballots. The announcement by, were made by these good people almost 70% of the time. In other words, almost 70% of the announcements done at BOMAS were done by these particular commissioners. And the tables were there for everybody to see where verification was happening and they had no, no one stopping them from going to attend or direct if they wanted to direct. We would have shown at this point their access to the floor in the four minute clip, but in, in, in view of time, I will skip that. But I would urge the court to look at that video clip to show the extent of the, the, the operations of the, of the commissioners, uh, the, and, and especially these four, in terms of, uh, of the, uh, operation, the operations at BOMAS. Then we go to the 27 constituencies. The affidavits clearly show that those constituencies were tallied and they were in fact verified. And that the record will clearly show that what was remaining was the announcement. And the four second clip will show you the environment and the fracas at the announcement uh, podium at the point in time when Professor Goulier was to go to that podium to announce the 27 uh, uh, stations which had been verified and, and tallied. I, I, I'll, I'll play the four second clip. Uh, uh, thank you, Sunia. Uh, please. Yes, this is Bomas just before Professor Goulier was to announce this is this is covered in the affidavit of the chairman and is also uh, uh, touched on in the affidavit of professor gulier and also the chief executive mr marjan my lords that was the environment at that particular time it was practically not possible for Mr. Goulier to announce. Our contention is that that lack of announcement 
does not go to the level where you would consider those uh, 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 constituencies untallied or unverified. What then, what then were the aim of the commissioners when they say we wanted to quote unquote own the, the, the results? Because verification is a very simple process. It has been defined, I'm not going to waste a lot of time on it. Tallying is a mathematical process. The only other verification required other than compare the forms was has the candidate met the 50% plus one. What the commissioners actually wanted to do was what was stated in the affidavits of the chairman, the Professor Goulier, and uh, Mr. Molu, which was to moderate the results so that a pre-agreed or pre-arranged result can be declared. That is what they wanted. What they wanted was for a meeting to sit over the decision of who will be president. Not the voters, not Form 34A, not the polling station as the law is, but for a meeting of the commissioners at the National Tiling Center after the work had been done to moderate. That is illegal, it is unconstitutional, it is completely unacceptable. And this is in the affidavit. There were two meetings prior to that final meeting. One where there were visitors from the security agencies and the other from individual Kenyans. And those meetings were confirmed by all the protagonists. And this really was the scheme. This was the rupture. You asked yesterday, how come we had not heard of this dysfunctional commission earlier? because it was a process that was going on and at the point of disagreement is at the point where now we have rupture. And from that point onwards, those commissioners are part of the scheme and this time instead of announcing the wrong results, it is aimed at getting this court to overturn the, the results. That is the scheme, that is, that is the decision the commissioners wanted to be part of. In terms of technology, there are a number of allegations. I adopt the, the presentation from my colleague, Mr. Gumbo. In terms of the numbers, I adopt the long presentation of, of Mr. Mahat. And I would stop there in terms of the allegations. Suffice it to say that there have been many, they have been sensational, they have remained unproven, and they are not worthy of the level required to overturn the presidential elections of this country. Let me now go to the remedies very briefly. And the remedies, just one point in terms of, in terms of the earlier issue. There was a push for moderation. That essentially is to, to overturn the elections. There was interference from state agents, again asking for, for, for a, a specific, those are uh, avowed in, in, in several affidavits. There was uh, uh, the issue of the DCI and certain other state agencies. Contrary to the, the law requires that under uh, uh, sub, uh, section 105 of the Elections Act that all state organs and state officers must give assistance to this commission during this difficult period. Contrary to that, the DCI was indeed an impediment to the holding of the elections and to the, to the functions of the IEBC at that point in time. There are very many officers of the commission picked from the Tiling Center, outside the Tiling Center. It is not a coincidence that the four commissioners refer to those staff members which were then picked by the ATPU. Ask yourself, what is the anti-terrorism police unit got to do with our, our elections in Bomas? Why would the anti-terrorism police unit be involved in the tabulation verification exercise at Bomas? And that scheme, that assault on our democracy is what you are being asked now at the tail end to, let me also refer you to the affidavits of the commissioners where they say that the election process was okay until the very tail end. That tail end is where the, the matters went haywire. Let me go to the reliefs, my lords and my ladies. The reliefs as known by law in terms of the constitution is at 143, the Supreme Court, 
if the Supreme Court determines that the election of the president-elect to be invalid, a fresh election shall be held within 60 days after the determination. And Rule 22 of this court's uh, presidential election petition rules empowers the court after hearing a presidential election petition to either dismiss the petition, which is what we are urging the court to do, what our clients are urging the court to do, or to declare the election of the president-elect either valid or invalid, and invalidate or invalidate the declaration made by the commission under uh, Article 139.5, and then orders to payments. There was a reference to Section 80 of the, of the Elections Act, uh, and it states uh, that the court has additional power to, quote, direct the commission to issue a certificate of election of a president if upon recount of the ballots cast, the winner is apparent and that the winner is not found to have committed a an election offense. Our view is that this is not operative in this case. Number one, this section uh, assumes a recount. We have no recount in this case. Number two, it's not specific to the presidential elections, as is the case with the Constitution. And number three, it says that as a precondition, as a condition precedent, whoever is getting the benefit of that, that uh, uh, relief must, of necessity, have not committed an election offense, which presupposes that there is a process for that to have been determined, which has not happened in this case. In any event, it is the contention of the petitioners that indeed the petitioners or their agents are guilty of presidential or of election offenses, and therefore they ought not to be entitled to that relief. But can I go back to the relief sought by, by the by the um, by the the petitioners, especially in 005. They are very convoluted. There are many. They are, they are conflicting. Uh, if you look at, uh, and some of them are, are strange. For example, there is, uh, there is in paragraph 18 of the remedies sought in the petition, petition number 005, you are asked to uphold the decision of the four commissioners in rejecting the declaration. No such decision or no such lawful decision exists. You are asked in paragraph nine to order directing IBC to tally and verify, then declare that has already happened. The tallying and verification has already happened. You are also asked to find that the elections were held in complete contravention of the constitution, yet declare uh, uh, under section, hopefully at 84, the, the, the petitioners, the, 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 the president elect and the deputy president elect those two do not help the same. And then you also asked to get the election invalid, in which case the section kicks in that there will be a, a rerun in 60 days, yet to hold that the IEBC, as currently constituted, cannot hold the election. In which case, again, you have a conflict that is not, that is not uh, uh, subject to be determined. So our view is that the, the totality of the relief sought uh, in, in uh, 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 raise a lot of, of, of problems as mentioned by the judges on a number of occasions. In terms of the reliefs we are seeking, we are seeking the reliefs as listed out in the, in the responses, all of them and jointly. We are also seeking reliefs as, as far as the, the, uh, the uh, chairman is concerned, as far as the number of, of criminal actions uh, uh, stated uh, in, in uh, or alleged in the in the in the in the respondents, I adopt all the the affidavits, my lords and my ladies, stated by my learned senior Professor Gideon Mugai, and the presentations uh, thereafter. Uh, suffice it to say that what we have witnessed is at the tail end of a very long process. We in this country have gone through a lot of reforms as a result of elections. If you recall, the entire ECK was disbanded by legal fiat as a result of an election. Thereafter, we have had to completely redo our election infrastructure. We have come to the point where this court five years ago laid the law. Now, if you look at all those uh, steps we have taken radical steps that have cost treasure, that have cost lives, that has, that has cost livelihoods, including uh, staff members of the ECK who have either died in office 
or who have been fired as a result of, of being told you have all been disbanded. Our law has no problem, my lords. Our elections have no problem. The problem lies with our politics and the problem lies with our political culture. That cannot be legislated. It cannot be delivered through litigation. It has to be elsewhere. Men and women who run for office in this country must accept that it is possible to win. Indeed, it is even more likely to lose because typically an election involves more than two people. And the chances of the losers being more than the winner are very high. Until we accept that, we are going to be harming the country, we are going to be harming our institutions, we are going to be hurting independent institutions and individuals who work in those institutions. Kenyans who give a lot, ask for nothing, and get to be denigrated in the hallowed halls of this court. My lords, I will stop there. I will ask my... Thank you, my lords, and my ladies. My lady, learned members of the court, it gives me great pleasure to return back to the court 13 minutes and 20 seconds. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for donating to us uh, 13 minutes. Uh, we will... Yes, 